So, Tony. You don't mind me calling you Tony? What can I do for you? Well, you can introduce me to the boss. You can talk to me. <laughs> A fucking woman boss? So what do you want? Never happened in the States. In the second season episode of The Sopranos called Commandadori, Polly, Christopher, and Tony go to Naples to hammer out a deal about stolen cars. The episode introduces the beloved re reoccurring character of Furio, which I will address in a subsequent episode. For this segment, we will be taking a look at Furio's boss, Annalisa, the female head of the clan. So firstly, we need to get some background information out of the way. When Salvatore Lucania, better known as Lucky Luciano, created the American Cosa Nostra, he made it so that all men of Italian descent could join, not just Sicilians like himself. While there has always been a subtle hierarchy, many non-Sicilians have risen high in the American Mafia. John Gotti himself was a Neapolitan, not a Sicilian. Lucky Luciano's successor, Frank Costello, was born Francisco Castiglia in the region of Calabria. Not only that, but Tony Soprano himself is Neapolitan, as his family originates from Avellino, a market town located north of Naples. While the New World acted as a Mafia melting pot, the Old World stayed very much segregated. The Sicilian Mafiosi often saw members of the Camorra as undisciplined and ostentatious. This does not, however, mean that the Camorra itself was not strong, and both the Sicilian Mafia and the Camorra often worked closely on various criminal operations. The Camorra works more as a federalist structure. Small clans govern their turf while lying or fighting with neighboring clans. Sometimes, a clan will go around swallowing up smaller clans, building a massive network and power base. These arrangements can just as easily splinter and descend into civil war. Clans, or groups of them, can rise and fall, and sometimes be wiped out altogether. In addition, out of the ashes of a fallen clan, one or more can be born. This Medusa-like quality makes things tough for law enforcement. Busting one clan means another is likely getting stronger or being created from the remnants. So now that we understand this distinction, we can delve further into the character of Annalisa. While Tony is incredulous that a woman could be the boss, the idea is not so strange if one simply looks at the history of the Camorra. One of the most famous women involved in the Camorra was a teenage beauty queen named Pupetta Maresca. Pupetta means doll. Her real name was Azunta. While several months pregnant, she gunned down the man who shot her husband, Pasquale of Nola, a Camorra boss that extorted the Neapolitan fruit and vegetable market. The resulting trial made her a media sensation. Despite her best efforts, she was jailed for the vengeful murder. Over the course of the trial, it was revealed that she came from a powerful Camorra family. Likely, her marriage to Pasquale Simonetti was sealing a pact between the two clans. After serving her sentence, Pupetta was released, where she continued to consort with gangsters, marrying Amborto Amaturo, a powerful boss and drug smuggler. In this instance, Pupetta was not herself a boss, but was not squeamish about getting involved in the family business. The character of Annalisa more likely took her inspiration from two famous women of the Camorra, the first being Camorra boss Ermina Giuliano. Ermina Giuliano was the sister of the famous Luigi Giuliano, who ran the Giuliano clan from the 80s into the 2000s before becoming a pentito or repenter, as informants are known in Italy. The clan had been started by their father in the Forcella section of Naples, the tight winding city center also known as the Casbah. They were involved in drugs, cigarette smuggling, extortion, gambling, and sports betting of all kinds. Luigi was well respected in the other world community and had powerful allies with other clans. He also was a close personal friend with soccer legend Diego Maradona. Their friendship even produced this famous photograph of Maradona and Luigi in a shell-shaped bathtub at Giuliano's home. It was also said that they helped to make the soccer star a cocaine addict, and when he got into debt convinced him to throw games. By the 2000s, however, the law had caught up with ice eyes, as Luigi was also known. When faced with jail time, he turned to the side of the government, giving evidence on his family and criminal associates. In the wake of this, no one was fit to lead but Ermina. All the other men in the family were in jail. This is similar to Annalise's situation, as her husband, the clan leader, is serving a life sentence. In addition, she mentions that many of the other eligible men were killed in bloody gang wars. Our men kill each other. All my brothers, for example, they all got murdered, or they go to prison. Rome has a war against us. But our men are in love to their mama, huh? Eh? So obeying a woman is not, um, uh, come it is, um, comes natural, huh? Eh? Well, I'll be dipped in shit. Ermina Giuliana herself reportedly had a violent streak, stabbing an enemy gang leader and once driving her car into a shop window trying to kill another. 
The law began to target her, likely based on evidence given by her brother, now a collaborator with Justice. Despite her violent tendencies, law enforcement said she was a good boss, using her intelligence and guile to captain the clan. Finally, she was captured when police raided her daughter's house, where they found her in a hidden compartment in the kitchen. Before she went with the police officers, she, she insisted on having a visit from her hairdressers. She then dressed up in high heels and a fake leopard skin coat. As she was let out in handcuffs, her daughters watched with trepidation. Her final words to them were, I'm counting on you now. I am relaxed. I have taught you all the true values in life. Ermina seems to be the best fit when looking for a real-life counterpart to Annalisa. The episode provides one more small clue. In this scene, where Polly enjoys an espresso in a local shop, he looks over and has a small exchange with this man, who is actually the series creator David Chase. In the background, the man at the next table behind Polly reads a local newspaper. On the paper, the article displayed to the camera says, Il Clan Miso, or the Miso Clan, formed and run by Camorra boss Giuseppe Miso. Miso himself had been a close ally of Luigi Giuliano, and seems to be a very subtle nod to the Giuliano clan. However, like all things in art, there is never one main inspiration. Another famous woman boss who operated just on the outskirts of Naples was Maria Lachardi. Lachardi was born into a clan created by her father. Leadership was later passed to her brother Gennaro, also known as the Monkey. Gennaro saw the lucrative business of drugs and began to realize that the neighborhood controlled by the Lachardis was flush with abandoned buildings and warehouses, perfect for storing large drug lots. Gennaro was however arrested and died of blood poisoning in prison in 1994. Not only that, but another brother of Maria's and her husband, who was also a Camoristi, were both jailed as well. This left it up to Maria to run the clan. The clan, already firing on all cylinders, especially in drugs, began to join a group of clans from the north of Naples. The alliance was known as the Secondigliano Alliance, referencing the notorious crime-ridden northern suburb of the city. The alliance was used to pool resources and both settle and prevent disputes, especially over drugs. The clans would pool money on drug lots, find stash houses, provide security, packaging, and distribution. Other clans involved were the famous DeLoro clan, which was a sort of rival to the Lachardi's power, as well as the LaRusso, Mallardo, Contini, and several other clans. In one infamous incident, a shipment of heroin came from Turkey in 1999. It was the purest ever received, and Maria said that they should not put the product out as the addicts would die from the strong dose. Other clan leaders disagreed, such as Salvatore La Russo, and released the product on the street. Addicts died in droves, and police stepped up investigations and surveillance, putting the squeeze on the business. Looks like they should have listened to Maria. The intense police pressure sent Maria underground, where she lived as a fugitive before she was finally arrested and imprisoned. During her two years as a fugitive, she waged a bloody war with a rival clan and bombed the offices of one zealous police officer who was on her tail. Once, the police raided her suspected hideout to find a grand piano, marble floors, and a jacuzzi. During the entire time she was hiding, she never left the northern suburbs of the city. The police finally caught her as she was being chauffeured through the city by her sister. Following her imprisonment, it is said that she still controls the clan from behind bars. So as we can see, the tradition of woman involvement in the Camorra activity is nothing new. Giuliano and Lucciardi were both in charge of large clans presiding over a vast criminal network, and are not the only women of the Camorra to do so, just two of the most famous examples. This is likely where David Chase took his inspiration in creating the character of Annalisa. Cut, suckers. Oh, 